demonstration of Indrajal which is being spoken about as something that is going to be new and provide a shield of defense for the country. I have with me Wing Commander Simon Leila, co-founder of Green Robotics. Uh, what is this doing uniquely that we did not have so far in the country? So far we never had a comprehensive wide area uh, anti-US approach. Anti-US includes uh, not only the drones, small drones that we are looking at, but everything which is significant in this space. Everything low RCS in terms of uh, loitering munition, uh, incoming RE case, incoming weapons, uh, the uh, mail and hail drones, also. That's a lot of jargon for our viewers. So, so what he mentioned, at least one of them I can unjargon for you, which is the uh, counter unmanned aircraft uh, surveillance system, is it? Yes. So the threats are changing. Uh, there are lots of a variety of threats that are posing uh, problems to the, especially in the border areas. Uh, the essence of uh, this particular threat is that uh, yeah, it will make the borders porous. Because if we have static defenses against ever uh, emerging threats which are moving continuously, you are likely to have holes and gaps. So you need to look at this from a mesh architecture perspective. That means you should be able to have ability to redeploy and deploy as per the operational requirement on the go. If you, Which is uh, means it's a very dynamic situation. It's a dynamic situation. You have a, a battlefield. Battlefield is dynamic. It opens up an entire uh, space which has not been defended in the previous uh, previously. You take a small portion of the, uh, if you make a small advance, there is no existing defenses there. What you need to do is to be able to push in your sensors, push in your weapons and still be in control of that area. And Indrajal gives you a facil ability to actually move uh, into battle, uh, knowing fully well that wherever you are deployed, you can get connected into a singular mesh. And once you are connected into a singular mesh, you can con exercise the entire command control from it. Single this sounds fascinating for us, but uh, I'm saying is the Indian military, uh, you are a private sector, you have uh, developed this as private sector. Uh, this is not uh, core uh, competence that the military itself has developed. So how open are they to using this technology? It's obviously the need of the hour because everywhere we are seeing it's going to be drones in the future, threats also and utility as well. Uh, as far as uh, the understanding of the military landscape is there, it, it comes with experience of having done there, uh, done that and been there before. Okay. So as far as uh, military is concerned, uh, they are open to looking and experimenting with this kind of a solution. We are aware of the requirements. We build the framework for them to uh, modify as per their requirements. Technically, we don't touch the databases. We will let them uh, populate the databases so that it is relevant to their deployment. Neither we will dictate their deployment. What we are giving them is a framework that they are free to utilize as per their existing need. If they would like to deploy X number of sensors and X number of weapons in a particular engagement zone, we will give you the framework to connect it, bring the data back, detect, identify, track and be in a position to engage. Uh, the entire standard operating procedure for that uh, is uh, purely military and the framework is purely ours. Okay. Um this is obviously much beyond just military because whether it's VIP security or uh, security installations, oil, nuclear installations, even crowd control actually, uh, you know, you, around the Charminar you may have a huge event or the monument itself. So what happens? Does a city opt for this kind of a cover canopy and actually everything gets covered or they, chose, they choose specific locations and then go about it? Yeah, the easier way to do uh, would be to opt for a centralized system. Uh, something which is passive, non-invasive should be omnipresent. The threat is not going to announce itself for an event. Threat is always available. It comes from the neighborhood rooftops as I commonly say. Somebody assembles something, just throws up in the air and it can attack a static installation like a VIP location. So ideally, we must be prepared to have a presence of an umbrella and that's the essence of Indrajal. You need to have an umbrella to protect something which you think is essential, like an economic target a, uh, a population target or even a military target. So we make no distinctions in terms of the employability. The layers of defenses that you build into it will depend on use case to use case in terms of sensor detection. Similarly, in terms of the type of weapons that you would like to deploy, it's again the prerogative and the standard operating procedure of that particular organization. Military has no bars. It can employ missiles against incoming threat because most of what it perceives is enemy. But in the case of a civilian environment, you may not be free to use missiles and guns. So we are good to work with uh, certain other kind of soft kill options. 
where uh, you're actually repulsing and repulsing. sending the drone away. Absolutely. If the objective of the drone was to drop something and you're successfully repulsed as you saw in the demonstration, it means that the threat is not presently going to interfere with you. Secondly, uh, more important than that is for there is a standard operating procedure of how you will deal with these threats in an urban area. Real-time information has to be given to those agencies to be able to neutralize the threat. The system holds off a detection envelope, brings uh, uh, tracking into place, identifies and hands off the data to a person who can make the decision. If it is allowed to be autonomous, the system can engage the weapon. If you need a man in the loop, it is provided. But we would prefer a man over the loop with the system having subsumed the SOP, which is the operating uh, mandate of that particular agency. So you save a lot of time though, you are saying human in the loop uh, for uh, those critical decisions to be taken, is that right? Absolutely, the essence is to be autonomous, uh, real time and uh, there is no time to lose because the life cycle of a threat could be uh, as much as 30 seconds. So if we lose time in the process of you know, mundane tasks which can be done uh, by the systems, for example, uh, we use a lot of artificial intelligence frameworks to improve the data number crunching, the correlation and the engagement cycle decisions. So we use AI to bring cut down the decision further. We use real-time processing to ensure that the data uh, that is being generated is con brought to context and handed off for a weapon engagement decision. So how unique is this uh, in the country, in the world and also its cost effectiveness? Uh, uh, as I understand it, obviously, whenever we have physical infrastructure to be deployed for security, that is going to be also a huge cost. Uh, let me answer the first part. It's pretty unique. Uh, there's nobody uh, in the last two years that who has actually announced a comprehensive wide area framework after we made this announcement two years ago. When you're saying wide area, what is the area? Wide because? area could be as big as a, a frontage of a tactical battle area or an entire city or an entire refinery complex. 4,000 square kilometers, you are saying? Up to 4,000 square kilometers. A simple refinery complex could be three to 400 square kilometers. So to deploy a single system over that framework is uniqueness of this particular system. This system ensures no conflicts of command and control because there is a single decision uh, center. That itself is a huge uh, uh, benefit in terms of operations. It also is a huge benefit in terms of conflict of command control, also in terms of costs. This is the third part. In terms of costs, we are hugely indigenous. A large amount, we comply to a large amount of uh, IDDM uh, compliances and uh, that itself is a significant step. Uh, let's understand one thing that just by getting the next generation technology doesn't improve the system. It's how the algorithms play out the, with the existing data that you will see a benefit. Uh, we have built the entire software suite over the last 10 years to be in a position to say what we are saying today. So this is an another cost saving for an Indian entity to own uh, the, the governmental and defense entities to own this kind of a framework to be future ready yeah. is a huge cost saving. There have been instances in the past when we purchase aircraft and an update on the aircraft costs more than the original purchase of the aircraft. I'm just giving you an yeah. example. But if you own the entire uh, uh, operating environment and when you need to integrate something which will be developed in the future. Sure, sensors, weapons will keep changing. So this framework will help enable you to integrate additional layers at minimal cost because you own the framework. Okay, from uh, a very uh, news reporter kind of understanding, China, what they deploy from there, Pakistan, drones come and we say drugs are brought in. So will this have an immediate use there, ready to use there? Absolutely. So certain layers of Indrajal are ideally suited for uh, deployment uh, in border sections. Uh, we would like to recommend it to the uh, uh, service in concern as to what is the kind of solution. Indrajal has the layers for immediate deployment of protecting and handling situations up north and also up in the east and the western theatres. Okay, everything is artificial intelligence based but obviously the technology is something that's evolving, changing every single day. So, how do you keep up? Artificial intelligence is ever changing. So you need more data to make more efficient decisions. And the system is on a self-learning process. So uh, uh, it's not true to say everything is artificial intelligence. The beauty of ability to use artificial intelligence in, is to know where you would like it to be deployed. If you would like a system which has to substitute you, we are far away from that. We need to be intelligent enough to understand that number crunching has to be done by the system. 
the decisions where human mind is unable to cope up must be given to systems and we have identified several pockets of influence as far as the system is concerned so uh, artificial intelligence helps your decision making cuts down the time enables you consistent uh, decision processes and also enables you to learn on the go to improve the system into the future thank uh, you so much so fascinating uh, technology that's now been demonstrated and this is something that will put the country ahead in terms of uh, being able to talk about security solutions in hyderabad with camera person nagraju uma sudhir ndtv